the Nile, the world's longest river, 6,671 kilometers in all, bound for the Mediterranean Sea. Traveling through ancient Egypt, the Nile annually became a great brown rushing torrent, peaking from September through October. In its wake came a gift of sediment, gathered from the Ethiopian highlands, swirled into a rich, thick black mud. These deposits were a boon to farmers throughout the Nile Valley. For 3,000 years, the mighty Nile shaped nearly every facet of Egyptian life. Its sediment replenished the land. Its waters fed irrigation trenches and canals necessary to the growth of crops. Some scholars believe that astrology arose out of the need to predict accurately the time and locations of the annual Nile flood. For just as the river Nile could bring growth and prosperity, it could snatch it away in devastating fashion. By the 20th century, Egypt had taken steps controlling the great river, making its gifts predictable and abundant. In the early 1960s, Egyptian President Gamal Abdel Nasser fostered the engineering of the Aswan High Dam, a massive structure located six kilometers north of the old Aswan Dam built by the British in 1902. Today, the Aswan High Dam's hydroelectric equipment provides about half of all Egypt's electric power. Its massive walls help control the flooding of the Nile River, and man-made Lake Nasser provides a controlled flow of water in dry years. The Nile Valley now yields several harvests a year instead of just one. As a result, Egypt's agricultural income has increased by 200% over the past 30 years. Thank God we can grow oranges and citrus fruits here. We also have bananas and dates. Thanks to the Aswan Dam, our lands are protected against floods and we have more arable land and more electricity. Yet for all its benefits, the Aswan High Dam has ushered in as many problems as it has solutions. The Aswan High Dam project flooded many rare archaeological sites and forced the removal of priceless monuments from Egypt's past at a cost of over 40 million dollars. Thousands of Nubian farmers were resettled while their homes and culture were drowned beneath Lake Nasser. Containment of the Nile at the Aswan High Dam has drastically reduced the flow of silt and sand to the Nile Delta, resulting in less nutrients for croplands. Artificial fertilizers must now be used to replace missing natural nutrients. Fertilizers which pollute the ground and water. Less water flowing downstream from the Great Dam has increased erosion of the shoreline and allowed salt from the Mediterranean Sea to creep inland, making soil and groundwater abnormally salty. Diseases such as Rift Valley cattle fever, malaria and elephantiasis are an effect of reduced flow and stagnant water pools. As a result, chlorine must now be added to drinking water to prevent widespread illness. Most ominous of all, pressure from the sheer volume of water at Lake Nasser, leading to cracks in the high dam, have caused seepage to surrounding dry land. If the dam should break, millions of people downstream would be killed and thousands of hectares of croplands ruined. <laughs> 